impressive weights on this exercise, effectively overload the target muscle and force the bulk of the muscle fibers to fire. After you fatigue the majority of the fibers with a mid-range movement, you then move to a stretch position exercise, like the sissy squat. With this movement, you place the quads into a complete stretch, which allows you to take advantage of the myotatic reflex, or pre-stretch phenomenon, an action that can help you recruit fibers out of reserve. In other words, you're able to pull dormant muscle fibers into the action for a more intense contraction. Getting these reserve fibers into the action is one of the keys to rapid muscle size increases. Research has shown that pre-stretch forces this reserve fiber recruitment phenomenon, which also remains in effect for the next exercise as well. Now that you've primed many of the reserve muscle fibers to contract, you move to an exercise that has resistance in the contracted position to give as many muscle fibers as possible one final growth stimulating blast. You work the contracted position movement last in order to place the target muscle in its ultimate peak contracted or flexed state with opposing resistance. For example, with leg extensions you engage your quads through the entire range of motion and at the end of each rep, you get an intense, cramping contraction that squeezes the last bit of effort from the working fibers, including many reserve fibers. By working your quads mid-range, stretch, and contracted positions, you can efficiently fatigue your front thighs during each workout with fewer sets, while still covering all the angles. From a physiological standpoint, this type of efficiency of effort in the gym is the key to maximum muscle growth in a much shorter time frame. A pair of fully developed hamstrings adds tremendous width and sweep to the thighs when they're viewed from the side. Most bodybuilders use leg curls to train their hamstrings, but this is only part of the mass equation. You must work them from their three positions of flexion if you want total size and detail. You achieve the hamstring's mid-range position during the top one-third of a deadlift or stiff-legged deadlift. Here, your glutes and lower back provide the most synergy. You reach the hamstring's stretch position at the bottom of a stiff-legged deadlift. At this point, your hamstrings are completely stretched in order to activate the myotatic reflex. You achieve the contracted position of the hamstrings when your torso and thighs are on the same plane and your calves are almost flush against your hamstrings as in the top of a leg curl. With these hamstring positions defined, you can now construct the ultimate routine to pack more size and sweep onto the back of your upper thighs. The first exercise in the POF hamstring routine is the stiff-legged deadlift. Notice that this is both a mid-range and stretch position movement. You work the mid-range at the top of this exercise and reach a full stretch at the bottom. Muscle teamwork allows you to really pile on the poundage so that you give the maximum number of hamstring fibers a sizable jolt. Plus, you get the added effect of the myotatic reflex in the stretch position, which doubles the effectiveness of the movement. This combination makes the stiff-legged deadlift a super hamstring builder. To get the most from this mid-range and stretch position exercise, keep your back flat, no rounding. This will make the exercise safer and force the hamstrings to do more work. Also, use little or no pause at the top. There is no resistance here, so pausing will only rest the target muscles. Try to keep the bar moving in a piston-like manner, two seconds up and two seconds down, and concentrate on feeling your hamstrings do the work. Initiate a quick twitch when the bar reaches the midpoint of your shins. Alternate hamstring mid-range and stretch position movements include 
Good mornings. Remember to keep your back flat and stop the movement just before your torso is parallel to the floor. This will make the exercise safer and more effective. The second exercise in the POF hamstring routine is the lying leg curl. With this movement, you get a total contraction in the target muscle with each rep. Also, by doing this contracted position movement after you hit the stretch position with the stiff-legged deadlifts, you continue to recruit muscle fibers out of reserve. To make this contracted position exercise as effective as possible, don't raise your hips off the bench. Hold for a two count at the top of the movement and really flex your hamstrings. Keep your feet flexed toward your shins. Calf size helps balance well-developed quads and adds to a bodybuilder's symmetry. Big calves also give the legs a fuller appearance, creating that sought-after, powerful pillar effect. Once again, to get this type of awe-inspiring development, you must work your calves from their three positions of flexion. You achieve the calves' mid-range position when you curl your lower leg up with your toes pointed. The calves and hamstrings work together to power the weight up. You reach the calves' stretch position when your torso is at a 90-degree angle to your thighs and your heels are down below your shins, as they are at the bottom of a donkey calf raise. At this point, your calves reach a complete stretch due to a combination of torso angle and heel position, which allows you to activate the myotatic reflex. You achieve the calves' contracted position when your torso and thighs are on the same plane and you're up on your toes, as in the top of a standing calf raise. Let's use these positions of flexion to construct the ultimate calf routine. The first exercise in the POF calf program is the toes-pointed leg curl. This is a mid-range exercise. Notice how the calves engage as you curl the weight up. The toes pointed style allows this to happen. To get the most from this mid-range position exercise, keep your toes pointed throughout the exercise. Also, there's no need to pause at the top or bottom of this movement. Remember, this is a mid-range calf exercise. The second movement in the POF calf routine is the donkey calf raise a stretch position exercise. Keep in mind that by keeping your feet angled slightly in throughout the exercise, you enhance the pre-stretch at the bottom. To make this exercise as effective as possible, use a quick twitch at the bottom to activate reserve muscle fibers. There is no need to hold and flex at the top as this is not a contracted position movement. Due to the 90 degree angle of your waist and legs, you don't achieve an intense contraction at the top of this exercise, at least not like you do with the contracted position exercise, which comes next. With any standing calf raise movement, you get a total calf contraction if you keep your torso upright on the same plane as your legs. Also, by doing this contracted position movement with a slight toes-out stance, you enhance the contraction at the top of each rep. To make this exercise as effective as possible, hold for a two count at the top of the movement and really flex your calves. Try to maintain a slight toes out stance throughout the exercise. You must also develop the soleus muscle if you want complete lower leg size and shape. The soleus runs underneath the gastrocnemius from knee to ankle. And when it's properly developed, causes the entire lower leg to appear larger. Luckily, the soleus's mid-range position is taken care of during the toes-pointed leg curls in the gastroc routine, and the stretch position is taken care of with the donkey calf raises. That leaves the contracted position, and you use the seated calf raise to get the best soleus contraction. To make this exercise as effective as possible, hold for a two-count at the top of each rep. 
now that you have the ammunition for a POF light blasting assault, let's look at a radically effective POF routine that will up the mass on your quads, hamstrings, and calves. Quadriceps, mid-range, squats, two sets of eight to ten reps, stretch, sissy squats, two sets of eight to ten reps, contracted, leg extensions, one to two sets of eight to 10 reps. Hamstrings, mid-range and stretch, stiff-legged deadlifts, two sets of eight to 10 reps. Contracted, lying leg curls. One to two sets of eight to 10 reps. Astrocnemius, mid-range, toes pointed leg curls. Two sets of eight to ten reps. Stretch, donkey calf raises or leg press calf raises. Two sets of 12 to 18 reps. Contracted, one leg calf raises or standing calf machine. One to two sets of 12 to 18 reps. Soleus, mid-range, worked during toes pointed leg curls. Stretch, worked during donkey calf raises. Contracted, seated calf raises, two sets of 12 to 18 reps. construct an effective upper back attack, you should first divide the area into two sections. The lats, which are the wide sweeping muscles under each arm, and the mid-back, or traps, which are broad muscles that run from the base of your neck down your spine to the middle of your back. These areas tend to function somewhat independently, and each has its own three positions of flexion. Let's look at the lats positions first. You work your lats through their mid-range position with any type of overhead pull-down to the front or chin-up to the front. You achieve the lats stretch position when your upper arms are up next to and being pulled slightly back behind your head, as in the bottom of a pullover. You achieve total lat contraction when your arms are down next to and slightly behind your torso you work the mid-range position first to hit the bulk of the lat fibers, so the first exercise in the POF lat routine is the front pull-down. Notice that the target muscle doesn't reach full stretch or complete contraction. 
There is not much stretch because the resistance is pulling your arms up, not back, as in a pullover, and the movement lacks complete contraction because the upper arms are pulling down and in from the sides. In order to get complete lat contraction, scapula rotation must occur, as in a stiff arm pull-down. To make this mid-range position exercise as productive as possible, don't lean back. Keep your torso upright so that you don't turn this movement into a rowing exercise. Pull the bar to just below your chin. Remember, this is a mid-range exercise, so the middle of the range of the motion is the most important. Also, because this is a mid-range movement, there is no reason to pause at the top or bottom. Keep the bar moving in a piston-like manner. Alternate lat mid-range exercises include front chins. Use a medium-wide grip and pull yourself up until your chin clears the bar. Then slowly lower back to the bottom. The second exercise in the POF lat routine is the dumbbell pullover. With this movement, you get complete lat stretch because your upper arms travel back behind your head. This complete stretch position for your lats allows you to take advantage of the pre-stretch phenomenon. By reversing the movement with a quick twitch in the bottom stretch position, you can involve more lat fibers, get a more powerful contraction, and stimulate more growth. To make the dumbbell pullover as effective as possible, don't pause at the bottom of each rep. You want a quick twitch at this point in order to recruit reserve muscle fibers. Retain a slight break at your elbows. This will relieve tension from your biceps and help you focus on your lats. Bring the dumbbell to a point just above your face and then begin the next rep. This will keep the resistance on the lats constant. Alternate lat stretch position movements include barbell pullovers. Keep the bar moving. Don't rest at the top or bottom of the movement. The third exercise in the POF lat program is stiff arm pull downs, which is a lat contracted position exercise. Really squeeze the lats hard at the bottom of each rep and feel the muscles contracting. The myotatic reflex in the previous stretch position exercise has primed reserve fibers to fire, so you'll really have to force yourself to push through the pain barrier to finish off your lats. To make this exercise as effective as possible, retain a slight break at your elbows. This will relieve tension from your biceps and help you focus on your lats. Alternate lat contracted position exercises include undergrip pulldowns. Although this isn't an isolation movement, you still get scapula rotation and effectively reach the lat's contracted position. Lean slightly back during the pulling stroke to ensure total contraction. The mid-back is a difficult area to develop for many bodybuilders. This is usually due to insufficient feel or an inadequate mind-muscle link during mid-back workouts. POF solves this problem with synergy, the myotatic reflex, and peak contraction, all of which you combine to give your mid-back a blast of blowtorch intensity. You achieve the mid-back's mid-range position when you pull your arms from an overhead position down and back. As in a behind-the-neck pull-down, you reach the mid-back's stretch position when your hands are close together and your arms are perpendicular to your torso, as in a close-grip cable row or one-arm dumbbell row. You achieve total mid-back contraction when your hands are out slightly wider than your shoulders and your elbows are behind and angled up away from your torso as in a medium wide grip row. You achieve the most synergy during behind the neck pull downs, the mid back's mid range movement, which means you work the bulk of the muscle with this exercise. Notice that the biceps, lats, 
and rear delts help the mid-back pull the bar down and back to the base of the neck. To get the most from this exercise, keep the bar moving in a piston-like manner. This is a mid-range movement, so there's no need to emphasize the top or bottom of the range of motion. Keep your elbows back to focus the majority of the stress on the mid-back. To reach the mid-back's total stretch position, choose the one-arm dumbbell row. Lower the dumbbell straight down, use a quick twitch to reverse the movement at the bottom, and keep your elbow angled slightly away from your torso. Notice that you don't achieve complete contraction at the top due to the way your torso rolls away from the dumbbell in this position. To reach complete contraction, you would need a different exercise. Wide grip cable rows hit your mid-back's contracted position. Your mid-back is now primed for maximum fiber contraction due to the myotatic reflex activation during the one-arm dumbbell rows. So you should have no trouble feeling your mid-back work. To make this exercise as effective as possible, squeeze the mid-back for a two-count at the top of each rep. Keep your torso as upright as possible. There's no need to lean forward on the downward stroke. Due to the trap's multiple points of insertion along the spine, the upper and lower areas tend to function somewhat independently. The previous routine stressed the lower portion of this muscle group, so for complete development, you need to hit the upper area separately. Fortunately, behind the neck pulldowns hit the entire mid-back's mid-range position, so all that's left is the stretch and contracted positions. One exercise hits both of these crucial upper mid-back positions, and that exercise is shrugs. The bottom of this exercise activates the myotatic reflex while the top gives your traps an intense contraction. This is the perfect finishing exercise for your mid-back routine. To make this exercise as effective as possible, Use a quick twitch at the bottom to activate the myotatic reflex and recruit more muscle fibers. Pause for a count of two at the top of each rep. Don't roll your shoulders back at the top. Your shoulder movement should be straight up and down. Now that you've seen all the positions for the lats and mid-back, let's look at the complete POF back routine. downs or front chins. Two sets of 8 to 10 reps. Stretch. Pullovers. Two sets of 8 to 10 reps. Contracted. Stiff arm pull downs. One to two sets of 8 to 10 reps. pull-downs, two sets of eight to ten reps, stretch, one-arm dumbbell rows, two sets of eight to ten reps, contracted, wide grip cable rows, one to two sets of eight to ten reps, upper stretch and contracted, Shrugs, two sets of eight to ten reps.
Here are a few tips and suggestions to help you get the most development possible from POF. One, train your legs and back no more than twice a week using POF. This will keep you from overtraining these muscle groups. Two, if you split your routine, alternate the following two workouts with a day of rest in between. Day one, quads, hamstrings, calves, chest, triceps. Day two, rest. Day three, back, deltoids, biceps, forearms, abdominals. Day four, rest. Three, do two light warm-up sets on your mid-range exercises for each body part using 50 to 70 percent of your work weight and one light warm-up set on your stretch position movements. Keep in mind that a warm muscle can contract harder than a cold one, so don't neglect these important sets. Four, take all of your POF work sets to positive failure to the point where another repetition in good form is impossible. This will ensure that you're overloading the muscle and stimulating growth at every workout. Five, never do more than 24 high intensity sets in any one workout. More than 24 sets taken to positive failure in any one workout will cause most bodybuilders to overtrain. Six, use a phase training approach. Do four to six weeks of high intensity training taking every work set to at least positive failure, then back off for two weeks, stopping every work set two reps short of failure. The two-week medium intensity phase will allow your recovery ability to heal and prepare your muscles and your overall system for your next high intensity phase. Seven, try aftershock training when you're ready to up your intensity level. One form of aftershock training is called isolation aftershock, and it consists of supersetting the stretch position and contracted position exercises in any body part routine. For example, for quads, do two sets of squats, then superset sissy squats with leg extensions. The reserve fiber recruitment you achieve with the sissy squats will more effectively carry over into your leg extensions when you superset making the peak contract